Hey guys, Ben with Income Option Training here. Wanted to go over my 2025 plan and kind of go through what I look at, um, what I think everyone should do at the beginning of the year, kind of create a trading plan, something for you to follow. And it depends on your experience and what your goals are. Uh, my goal is to uh, generate some income and minimize the risk. So um, I have used Option Omega, which is a backtesting software that uses one minute intervals. So uh, very helpful for zero DTE. Anything less than seven DTE, I think you should be using one minute data. Um, but I am looking for is having no overnight risk. So that's kind of what I've adopted um, over the past year and a half. Um, pretty much just traded, tried to minimize that overnight risk, the, you know, the, the, um, the, the big events that happen maybe throughout the world that might trigger a large move in the market. Want to avoid that. So my goal is to not have any overnight risk um, and it might work for you, uh, but that's just what my goal is. So I have used a number of strategies and I'll just go to my tests here. And these are some of the strategies that I've kept um, just in here. I've uh, found these, most of them were started um, either from something I found, something that's worked in the past, or through the Options Omega Discord server. Um, I've used some of these uh, as a starting point, as well as the Zero DTE mark on uh, YouTube as well. So that's kind of how I've started um, with a number of these, and I've tweaked them to uh, how I want to trade and what works for me. So. I'm just going to go into the portfolios portion of Option Omega. Um, if you haven't used Option Omega, um, I do have a referral link for 50% off for your first year if you're interested. And that link is for both the back testing, which, like I said, uses one minute intervals. It's super user friendly. Uh, they update um, each day with, with yesterday's values, so it's all up to date. And they also are releasing um, bot trading uh, for Tasty Trade and for Tradier. So if you're interested in bot trading, basically, uh, if you can back test it, you can uh, bot trade it. So if that's also what you're interested in, the referral link will also get you 50% off for your first year on that as well. So um, <clears throat> there is uh, those advantages if you want to try it if you have any questions let me know i i can help help you out otherwise um if you go to their youtube page they also have the discord server completely free uh, a lot of helpful information there but anyways if we jump back to this portfolio here um this is a handful of tests and i've ran it back starting from 2019 through uh yesterday which was christmas and this one is resetting the starting funds, which I'm using $50,000 on a monthly basis. And what I'll be doing this year is probably resetting either at the quarter or at the half year mark. So this is a little bit uh, more aggressive, you know, if, if you're trading um, for a living, for example, um, you might want to take it out monthly. I won't be doing it as much and that'll help with the, the compound growth if you don't take it out as much. But I just wanted to, to show you um, with monthly withdrawal. So you're always starting each month with $50,000 and what that can do. Uh, if we look back at 2019, one thing that's that uh, 2022 and 23 really jumped off the page. Uh, vol was pretty sticky in those two years. And also in 2022 is when the uh, zero DDEs start trading five days a week. So prior to that, um, it was just the three days. It used to be just Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I think pre 2019, maybe 2018, it was before I started, it was only uh, Fridays. So um, that's one thing now, since uh, halfway through 2022, there's a lot more occurrences. So um, the 19 through 21 years are good to look at, but there's just going to be a lot less occurrences and it might not be as, um, realistic I'd say, but for only two and a half years, you know, it's not 
a whole lot of data to go off of. I mean, it's a lot of occurrences because it's, you know, 250 train days a year. So it is a, a good handful, but there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, different types of markets. It's been pretty much a bull market um, for the last decade, uh, two decades. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a little bit, um, you know, I just wanted to add some more in here so you can take a look. Um, so the yellow and this dark red are uh, my portfolio and the uh, teal and pink are uh, the S&P 500. So one thing that I look to do is minimize the risk. So I want to try to have a lower max drawdown than the market. And so in 2024, um, that was accomplished. Uh, 23, 22, 20, and 19, or not 19, but 20, uh, that was accomplished. So four of the years, four of the six years, we had a drawdown less than the market. 2019 and 21, uh, the drawdown was higher, but it was still less than 10% for both of those years. So that's uh, my first go-to is trying to do that. Beating the market um, is also the other thing I look for. So this year we did not, um, we're not on pace to beat the market. We still have a couple more days here, but not looking optimistic and that's okay. I mean, it's still a 16% uh, return if you take out um, the funds each month. 22 and 23, those were really good years. Um, so we had 60% and 60% annualized for both of those years so quite high and even before that 33 16 and 24 so still decent um so hopefully 2025 is better but um that's kind of what i'm looking for here so that's that's phase one and i've i've ran different portfolios with different tests um each of those tests i've changed um and tweaked so if you look at the strategies here this is just a brief uh, overview. Like I said, a lot of these, I uh, I used um, other people's um, maybe starting or template and tweak them. Um, you know, if they looked good, um, added fees, and I also, whenever possible, made it the most uh, stringent. So, for example, like on this uh, uh, no stop iron condor at the end of the day. I required two price uh, target uh, profit target, um, which means that it has to um, have two one minute intervals in a row where it's profitable before it triggers. So it just, you know, it it helps with those spikes in um, maybe back, some back testing might have. So um, whenever possible, I did that and then um, over here, I also have the allocation. So my morning trade, I get a lot of questions on that. If it's uh, an open um, or a, a normal iron condor, I'm looking to use 15% of my overall account on each day. So not loading the Flotel Flotola as you know Tom on Tasty Trade would say, but. Um, using just a small portion of that each day. And then um, my reverse iron fly, which uh, I do if the VIX is um, down overnight, I'm only using four and a half percent of my portfolio. So the, the morning trade, I'm either using 50% or four and a half percent based on if it's a credit or a debit trade. And then my afternoon trades, I'm using 25% each put spread that I put on. Usually um, it's two tranches. Um, <clears throat> so max that I would use on a typical day, if I'm putting two of these on, plus the morning trade would be 65%. Um, the, the afternoon iron condor here with no stop, I haven't been doing a whole lot. Um, it requires the premium to be at least four bucks and VIX can be only 21. So a lot, a lot of those, um, aren't tradable. Um, but I haven't really been doing it a whole lot, but if I do, it's just, it's pretty much a one lot with 2% allocation. Um, so 67% would be maximum. 
There are uh, this double calendar I do on Wednesdays, which is 5%. Um, so feel free to uh, pause the video and you can take a look at what these different um, tests are that I run. This is just what I've done a lot more as you, as you saw on that other page, but these are the ones that I feel comfortable with. They fit my personality, I've tweaked them. Um, and so that's what I use. And then also with Option Omega, you can go into the trade logs so you can see um, and compare your real results with what the back testing is. And that's really important if you're going to rely on this to see what your uh, expected value might be. Because you want to make sure you're including slippage correctly and that your credits and debits are lining up in real in real life. Because if these are off, if these are better than what you're actually trading, well, then you're going to be disappointed with your results. Um, and one thing with these, I would say, um, you know, max drawdown here is 15%, but I would plan for probably double that up to 30%. Just because, you know, in the last five years or six years, we haven't had... Uh, anything more than 50%, but that doesn't mean that next year is going to be the same. So same same with that. And then also this is a good target for your compound, compounded annual growth rate, but um, you know it could be could be less, and that's what we saw here. Uh, so this is 33%, but this past year was only it's, it's only been 17%. So um, half of that. So these are our values, but. Um, you know, it's just based on back testing, and back testing isn't um, proving what you're going to be doing in the future. So, those are the tests I run. I think it's important for everyone to go through and have different expectations. And um, one thing that uh, I think everyone should do is create a trade plan. So, I have a separate Word document that goes over uh, each day what I'm going to trade and basically uh, put these tests to paper and say, these are the parameters that I'm going to uh, trade with and try to uh, treat this like a business where you're going to be doing something um, maybe not robotic, like through a bot. But, um, <clears throat> you know, if you have a, a trade that says open at 1230, you know, you might open it at 1232 or something, for example. So it's not like a, a strict time frame, but at least uh, a reference. So, you know what you're trying to accomplish um, and then. The trade plan also is important so you don't veer off. I found early on in my trading career, I would, you know, I might buy some lotto tickets where I, I buy a five cent call for for the market or something and, you know, or do an earnings play, for example, because I'm bored. Um, earnings, I've found uh, pretty much a break even are a slight loser for me over the long run. So I just stop doing them. But I would I would always do them because they they're fun. It's it's like mini zero DTE trades, and with my trading plan, I just said I'm not going to do that at all. So, um, really tracking those things to uh, to try to stay in line with what you want to do. So, um, <clears throat> let's see here if we go through this here. Um, just real quick, the MAR ratio, um, I forgot what MAR stands for, but it's basically your uh, compounded annual growth rate divided by your max drawdown. So in this case, our portfolio is 2.2. Um, you know, it's each test has a different uh, ratio. It's just one measure to see, you know, what what um, it, it, it's a metric to compare different tests if you want to use it. That way, um, I'll just go into a test here and uh, I'll just use my open here. You can see a lot more data in each test. So you can compare and it's really easy. If you go to new back test, you can choose different dates and parameters and stuff. So it's super easy to play with and uh, modify. My first back test I did were with raw data and it was a real pain um, but this makes it super easy but you can um, for each test that you want to run each strategy you can um, run it to see what what to expect um, I'm not going to get into the weeds too much about back testing but I will say when you're talking about max drawdown 
you always want to allocate a percentage of your portfolio just because if you do like a one lot um if you have a big drawdown later on after you've accumulated a lot of funds it might just be a small blip um when in reality if you're trading a larger size then it would be a bigger drawdown so i know like when i first started i was interested okay if i do one one uh one contract how much can i make in a year but you you can see how much you can make and then you know if you're doing one contract in here but you actually are trading 10 well then i'm gonna say okay i'm gonna take whatever my pnl is and times it by 10. but it doesn't do a good job at your max drawdown so if you uh to get a better handle of how much you could lose which is you know important uh I, make sure you do a percentage of portfolio so a lot of information here um i think i'll probably touch on specific testing in a future video but uh that's kind of what i'm looking for from a portfolio standpoint here is uh running these values um so this is kind of what i'm going to try to um trade for 2025 this is kind of what i expect the other part i'm going to touch on is now with tasty trade you can um buy t-bills in your portfolio and it is margined at 94 percent so what that means is basically uh you take whatever the cash value is they take the cash but your buying power is it so if you buy a hundred thousand dollars of t-bills you can still use 94 percent of that hundred thousand to trade options so they'll still take the hundred thousand dollars in cash and hold that to buy the t-bills but you can still use that cash essentially to do these credit trades so in another video i'm going to look at my portfolio specifics and figure out how many or how much value in t-bills i want to buy on my fifty thousand dollar account um, so that'll be in a future video. Otherwise, like I said, if you have uh, any interest in Option Omega, feel free to have any uh, questions, drop them below. I do have that referral link for half off for the first year if you're interested. Um, otherwise, I think that's it that I want to talk about today. Um, if you have any questions on, on the tests or um, the portfolio tool here, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.